On today's educational session, we will discuss how to screen for diabetes and the diagnostic criteria for diabetes. Picture patient X. He's a 38-year-old male. He's very worried that he has diabetes. He denies weight loss, polyuria, or polyphagia. Both his older brother and dad have type 2 diabetes. His BMI is 28 and his blood pressure is normal. How do we approach this case? First, let's take a look at one of the screening criteria for diabetes. The USPTF is the easiest to remember. It states that any adult starting at 35 years of age to 75 years old with a BMI of at least 25, they recommend a screening for diabetes. As for patient X, since he's over 35 years old with a BMI over 25, we order a comprehensive metabolic panel, a CBC, and a hemoglobin A1C. And here are the results. Patient X has a fasting plasma glucose of 122, a normal serum creatinine, a normal CBC, and a hemoglobin A1C of 6.6%. He asks you if he has diabetes. Is he diabetic? And how do you know? Before we diagnose this patient as having diabetes, we have to understand that there is a diabetes criteria. This includes a fasting plasma glucose of at least 126 mg per dl, a hemoglobin A1c of at least 6.5%, a 2-hour plasma glucose of at least 200 mg per dl during an oral glucose tolerance test, or fourth is a hyperglycemic symptoms with random plasma glucose of at least 200 mg per dl. Now, it is also important to note that if the patient presents with severe hyperglycemic symptoms in a random plasma glucose of more than 200, then a confirmatory test is not needed. If the patient presents with asymptomatic hyperglycemia, a diabetes diagnosis requires two abnormal test results, either from the same sample or from another sample. So let's go back to the case. Since patient X has a normal plasma glucose of 122, but an abnormal hemoglobin of 6.6%, we have to order another A1C to confirm the diagnosis. A week later, he comes back to see you, and the second hemoglobin A1C is 6.8%. Since he presented with asymptomatic hyperglycemia, with two abnormal tests being hemoglobin A1C, this confirms the diagnosis of diabetes. On the same visit, we also have to assess for his microvascular complications that is related to diabetes. We have to order a urine microalbumin and a urine creatinine to assess for neuropathy. We will examine the patient for findings related to neuropathy, including assessment for any foot ulcers, and we have to perform a monofilament test. And we will also refer him to an ophthalmologist for his yearly creatinopathy assessment. Before we talk about diabetes management, let's talk about hemoglobin A1c, since it's the most popular screening test for diabetes. A hemoglobin A1c test has limitations and we have to keep that in mind. Firstly, hemoglobin A1c measures hemoglobin bound to glucose. Therefore, a low hemoglobin A1c indicates low glucose levels in the body bound to hemoglobin. A high hemoglobin A1c indicates that there are more glucose attached to hemoglobin. However, in conditions that affect RBC lifespan, the hemoglobin A1c result will not correlate well with hyperglycemia. And this is what we call A1c discrepancy. In conditions that have low RBC turnover, such as iron deficiency anemia, vitamin B12 deficiency, and folate deficiency, there will be less erythropoiesis, leading to more old glycated RBCs, causing a falsely elevated hemoglobin A1c. In conditions that have rapid RBC turnover, such as hemolysis or blood loss in a situation like GI bleeding, RBC stays in the circulation for a shorter amount of time, and therefore, there will be a lower number of glucose attached to hemoglobin. The result will show a falsely low hemoglobin A1c. So why is this important? Picture a 35-year-old female with type 2 diabetes. She comes to your office or the hospital. She tells you that she exercises 150 minutes a week and she takes her, her metformin every single day but her recent A1C is 7.5%. She also reports mineralgia and fatigue. Her lab results show microcytic anemia, low ferritin level, low serum iron, and a high TIBC. What should we do in this case? Instead of adding another oral diabetic 
medication, we recognize that this patient has iron deficiency anemia and her A1C of 7.5% is likely a falsely elevated result. Our approach in this case is to treat the underlying iron deficiency anemia and we check the A1C. Or another option is to order fructosamine. Fructosamine is bound to albumin and since the turnover of albumin is around 28 days, then fructosamine provides an estimate of mean glucose levels of over two weeks compared to three months with hemoglobin A1C.